there, happy Friday everyone. Thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroideries for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, for about an hour. And it's a time that we can relax and uh, craft together. So thanks so much for joining me. Tonight we are finishing the Luna Moth. There's actually not that much more to go. Uh, so I don't think this will take all that long tonight. Uh, and I'm not sure, we might just uh, call it a night then, uh, since it's Friday. Uh, or maybe we'll work on the line a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's get stitching. Okay, let's get going on this guy tonight. So here's where we left off. Uh, we got the entire butterfly, or the moth, done yesterday. Well, we didn't finish it all. Um, we didn't stitch the whole thing yesterday, but we finished it uh, yesterday. And I think he turned out so sweet. I do want to stitch one, like a small version of him in like metallic thread. Uh, I don't know when we'll do that, but like, I don't know. I feel like it needs to be done. <laughs> uh, just some shiny, uh, glittery uh, greens and golds. I think that'll be fun. So right now we are just kind of finishing up the top area and then we'll be we'll be all done here i think we'll do this l with just two big stitches i'm using a, a thread that i got going started on yesterday but i do think i will need more so the luna and these stars over here um need to be are well are in the blue and then these dots the french knots we have to do yet and those are going to be in the fawn color, which is uh, the little tan. So hope everyone had a lovely, lovely Friday. I did uh, um, some some work on the website. <laughs> uh, I don't know if uh, you'll be able to tell or not, but I worked on like the checkout system a little bit, so. If any of you guys, uh, I, I tested out myself, but um, if any of you have trouble, uh, please email me or message me um, that something's not working or whatever. I think it should all be working fine, but you know, there's always that possibility. So did that today. That actually took a long time. <laughs> Figured out some shipping things. It was a figure out the operations of all the tech day and actually I'm, I'm actually surprised that I was like able to focus on that all day because that's sort of a thing they can get away from you a little bit and then I uh, John got some groceries and so I've been kind of prepping that and cleaning the fridge since we were gone and now we have real food again so that's nice because that's annoying when we don't have any fruits and vegetables anymore So I feel better now. All right, I think, um, you know what? I think I, I know I'm gonna have to start a new piece. So I think this is probably a good place to weave in. So I'm gonna, even though I have a little bit more, I probably could have gotten some of that letter A, but not all of it. I'm gonna weave this in. Oh, let's, let's take care of that away knot right away as well. And, ooh, I did get more drawing done last night though. I stayed up in did some more iPad sketching for some new designs. So that was fun. Tonight though, I think I got to finish all the groceries. <laughs> oh, Amy says, love your shirt. This is, um, it's actually, I'm actually overheated right now, but it's comfy <laughs> and I'm going for comfy. Uh, this is a birthday present from, from John. John's birthday is on Monday. We are the summer birthday team in our family. We're the only, um, out of, oops, I lost the, lost the thread again. Out of all the, all the family, we're the, we're the summers. Ugh, I gotta trim this. Oh, 
always when I just have one more to go. And actually now it's too short, so I'm going to go um, weave my last end in with the needle or the eye of the needle first. So if your thread gets a little short, you can do that. There we go. All right, so we have Loon. <laughs> we have the uh, the A to go. Oh, <laughs> R.W. London says, I volunteered to do the groceries while you finish this. That'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that'd be nice. I, You know, I like... Um, I like prepping everything when it comes in, and, I, and that takes forever. Um, and I don't always have time to do that. But like when I prep everything, like cut up every vegetable that comes in, wash everything, you know, even like you know, make, you know, turn excess stuff into soup right away. All that sort of prep stuff with, or like make some rice. All the, doing that sort of stuff without actually making a meal. I mean, I I do kind of like doing that because then you just open the fridge and everything is just perfect but i that's just like it takes so much time to do that but we waste the least amount of food when when it's all prepped like that and then we we also eat the healthiest and it lasts the longest um when we when we do that so it's worth it and i just have to like make time for it and just put my headphone on headphones on and do it and started a little late this evening on it but uh I think I'll get it going. I even have like some stuff prepped for for soup. It's a little hot for soup, but you know when you have the stuff for it, it's always it's always yummy. So um, like I have some some things that might be a little far gone if I don't use it, like some rice and um, some onions and stuff that we had in the fridge before we left, and and some cabbage. I don't know how all that'll work together, but you know, cook it all in some soup broth, and I. Um, some like stock that I have and you know get enough spices in there I think will be good and that'll clean up the fridge too without wasting things so maybe I'll cut all that stuff up tonight and then cook it tomorrow because I don't think I'm going to be waiting around for soup to cook and it's the dead of summer too so <laughs> maybe I'll instant pot it I think I could do that but still, I'll, I'll prep it for tomorrow, I think. But I love that. I love when you open the fridge and everything's just there. RW says, like, all that all that should be automated so you can do more of the important stuff. Yeah, that would be amazing. And I suppose, to some extent, you could buy all that, like, cut up already. But, you know, I like, I like doing that myself. But, yeah, if that just got done, that'd be pretty cool. All right, we got the Luna. So, all right, I'm going to... Oh, you love this project? Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is our um, embroidery month. It'll be switching over in a couple days here on John's birthday. All right, so blue with the stars yet, so I'm just going to jump on over. I'm not starting them all fresh. Um, So, I'm hoping I can... I have enough loss of this blue oh I have plenty I forgot that I folded it over quite a bit so I do I, I, have, I have plenty to finish these stars which is great um and uh yeah then we'll do some French knots get her done yeah exactly the prepared stuff costs more and you know I don't know I like knowing knowing how it was washed and touched and, and all that sort of stuff <laughs> too and it, cutting it like how I want it cut and in the containers I want it in and, and all that so the pre-cut stuff but in a pinch that is that is nice like if you're going on a car ride or something a trip sometimes we'll get the pre-cut stuff but yeah I'm just happy that we have like like literal fruits and vegetables again. <laughs> uh, took a few days to get that together. It's always how it is, kind of when we get back from 
from, like visiting our parents. It's just gotta reset everything. I can tell though that I've been eating like weird stuff the past couple days because I just like, I don't know, my head feels foggy and headachey a little bit and I think it's from food. Oh, it lacks satis satisfaction. Yeah, when, <laughs> when you buy it all prepped. <laughs> That's true, I do. I mean like I do, and you know, and then the extra little bits I can put in our compost and uh, you know, that's kind of fun. I like that. Oh, thanks JDM. Thank you very much. We are almost done with him. I still do want to stitch this like half the size, but in that metallic thread. Ugh, I think that'd be so fun. Oh, Amy, totally. Amy saying, I'm the same way. Also like the full size carrots over the pre-bagged. Uh, likewise, um, first of all, I like don't they use like chlorine and a bunch of other stuff on those little baggy bagged uh, mini carrots? I don't even hardly. I just like kind of brush the carrots off. I don't peel them or anything. I just like brush them to clean them. Um, and then yeah, I'll just um, I'll cut some of those up into sticks and have them in the fridge ready to go for snacking. And then the rest I'll chop up uh, so we can use on like salads and soup and all that so yeah i definitely like the giant bags of those and they last a long time too the carrots which is nice do the same thing with celery cut cut a few up into sticks for snacks and and uh chop the rest up for soup and we've been doing like some juices and stuff with that too Yep, full carrots are bust, exactly. I wish we could grow them. I don't think, um, we've tried them a couple times doing carrots and it's just, we have not had success doing that. Oh, AKT, I am here every uh, uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, for like about an hour. It might be a little less today because it's Friday and I don't have that much left to do, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I am I'm definitely here. All of our kits, um, I have a link to all of our patterns and stuff in our, in our profile. They're all beginner friendly and I am here all the time to answer questions and stuff. I'm live, live every night and we have a bunch of videos and stuff too. Uh, next week, you guys, we are starting up the... Uh, ABC stitch along again and uh, Monday um, will be Monday through Friday we will be working on the monkey and then the next week uh, we'll be working on uh, the N the, for the newt let's see that's gotta be I mean we might be approaching halfway with this thing what's the like halfway point in the alphabet I don't know I guess I've never figured that out before I do, <laughs> this just popped in my head. I know that the letter I is number nine though. Is that true even? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember that from elementary school because we would have like, you know, we'd like write in code or something and each, each number uh, is a letter or whatever. So, you know, we'd like just, they'd coincide to that. And for some reason, I, I always remember that the letter I is number nine. <laughs> so I know I is at least nine and, and we're, we're past letter I. Well, I guess we can just go up to 13, right? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I, H, I, J, K, wait, did I do? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, H, I, J, K, L, M. So M, oh, M is the halfway point. Cool. All right, so dang, you guys, next week we'll be halfway halfway done. I mean, you know, we still have to quilt it all. Um, for We're going to be turning the whole alphabet into a quilt. So there's all that to do yet. But still, we're cruising. 
didn't realize we were that far already on that. That's awesome. So yeah, and then we have the L yet sitting here. Uh, this is the thing that I was thinking about working on. Maybe we'll do like the little, the roar on it, but I don't know. I don't know what to do for the L's yet. And I kind of feel like my brain's not quite there to make a decision like that, but we could probably do well, the roar maybe tonight yet. I don't know, we'll see. All right, we got the stars in there. So all we have left is uh, the, the like, I guess, other stars, the little far away stars around the moon. And that's with the fawn color. So it looks like we do need more. I'm out of, out of the fawn. So let's, let's just cut a piece of this. Um, 24 inches or so again. So half week, halfway uh, after next week, crazy. I'm so excited that we're stitching through the whole alphabet. I can't believe we haven't done it yet in, in all these years. Ooh, L in cross stitch style. Well, that's interesting. Like we could like just, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Amy, but like in my head, cross stitch style would be like dividing this up as like as if it's a grid and actually doing all the little X's for it. Like this could be like two rows of X's. Ugh, it could be just one row of X's too, but like theoretically like two rows of X's, X's there. That could be really, really, really fun. It would take forever. <laughs> Even to stitch this teeny, teeny bit as cross stitch, like cross stitch takes so long, but that would be really fun. Could be like a blue color or something even, or like one of these, one of these other ones. Like, I, 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 I don't think I want to do it rainbowy because I'd like the focus to be on his hair, but just like a little cross stitch, that could be kind of cool. All right, I kind of like that. All right, now I'm excited to do it all of a sudden. <laughs> so maybe I will stick around and do a little bit of that and I'm just like letting all this thread get away from me. Do I even have three pieces here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now I kind of really want to do that. <laughs> we'll eyeball a little grid. Hey, Julia. Uh, we'll eyeball a little grid and then just sort of do a little bit of cross stitch. I think that's fun. All right, uh, needle. Couldn't remember what to do next. All right, let's thread this guy up. And I feel like I need to do my nails again this weekend. It's only been a week, but I don't know. I've been doing a lot with my hands and I should probably wait till Monday though. Um, Monday, I'm gonna uh, ship all the embroidery of the month packages. Uh, cause Monday will be August. So I have all the August ones prepped and doing all that box related stuff, um, kind of tears up the nail. So maybe I will wait till next week. All right. I think I'm going to just like weave into, uh, the backs of these stitches here and then we'll just kind of jump and go, go around here. That seems like a decent enough plan. Then I can weave in the backs of these, um, back stitches, which I think are the nicest to weave in as far as stitches go. Okay. So what side did I end up on? Okay. On, on the right side. So, all right. For the French knots, uh, I will kind of run through my process for those again. I always think it's nice to review. Uh, one of these days we'll do, uh, like that French, French knot demo again of like the three things that you might be doing wrong with the French knot. Um, and actually, uh, if any of you have trouble with the French knot, uh, let me know right here and let me know what happens and I may be able to diagnose it and maybe we'll, um, I can do like some demos on the side potentially, but I'll run you through how I, how I like doing it. So, uh, you know, I have my dot here, uh, but for a French knot, I don't come up in the middle. I come up on one side of it. So I'm going to come up on like the lower right hand side. Then I'm going to hold, I, I like setting it down on a surface. It can be your lap. I, I like setting it on the table. If you have a, if you are like clamped into a, um, 
an embroidery stand or something, then you don't need to set it down, obviously. Uh, the point is I need two hands, so I set it down on something. So I'm holding it with my the thread with my left hand, the thread that's coming from the fabric. And then I'm going to, uh, with the needle, I'm going to point it towards um, my fingers here. So I've made like a full circle uh, with the needle pointing away from the fabric. So not towards, away. And then I'm going to just wrap it around, wrap the thread around the needle twice, and I'm going to hold those loops there with my finger, right in the middle of the needle. Okay, at that point, I can like shush everything down, and now I'm going to turn the needle so it points towards the fabric. And I'm going to go across the dot, so not in the same hole, I'm going to go across the dot and put the needle in about halfway. I'm gonna sit down again, and then I can lift up my finger. There's all those little loops there. I'm gonna pull my thread tight, so my loops uh, that was holding down are now up against the fabric and against the needle nice and tight. And I'm just gonna put my finger over, my thumb over those loops so they don't get away from me, and I'm gonna slowly pull um, my thread through. And uh, there we go. We got a cute little French knot. It's not all loopy and crazy. Uh, it didn't like pull to the back. Um, if you go in the exact same hole, then sometimes you can accidentally pull it to the back. Um, but yeah, so that's why I cross over. So I'm going to go a little bit faster. I'm going to just jump up. I'll, I'll talk through it though again. So I'm going to go on one side, grab the thread, point the needle towards my hand, loop around twice, hold it with my finger, then I can point my needle towards the fabric, put it on the other side of the dot, not in the same hole, pull the thread tight so it's against the fabric and the needle, then hold it there with my finger, my thumb, while I pull it through, just so I don't, so the loops just don't get away from me. So, all right, let's do a few more. Oh, you want to do some of those patterns, Donna, Donella, oh, wait, Donna. Is it Danella or <laughs> Donna? Let me know. Um, but yeah, we're going to be stitching up those alphabets. Uh, doing more of that next week. All right, I'm going to run, run through here. Uh, Gina's asking, is my nail process getting faster? It is, uh, sort of. It is because I realized that I wasn't actually using 100% acetone. And I thought I was, but I wasn't. And so that was a huge uh, reason why it was taking so long, because I couldn't get them off. But the last time I used acetone, it came off really fast. And then my mom had some on when I visited her, and uh, she took hers off and we timed it. It took her two, like, two minutes for each hand. So I'm like, dang. And the second hand, the experiment was that she didn't, um, sand it first. She didn't file it first. So the first one she filed because, you know, you hear like to rough up the tops, like get the top coat off and then do it. Uh, so that one took like two minutes and then we tried it where she didn't do that. She just left it all smooth. Um, and that still only took two minutes. <laughs> and that was with the hot water, like putting your nails in the, in like a, the baggie with the hundred percent acetone and like a paper towel and then putting that in hot water. So you have like heated up acetone basically. So two minutes. So that's the experiment I'm gonna try. See if I can get it off. But there's still freaking eight or like 10 fingers that need to be filed and shaped and you know, the rest of the process. And like the big annoying part of the process is once you have everything on there, you gotta like buff it all down. So that all takes a long time. So the only way I can see that going faster is if I, well, first of all, I'm sure I can get like tiny bits faster just from practice, but like truly faster is like if I get like a whole, one of those like Dremel tools <laughs> that, that, um, that people that like, you know, technicians have, but I'm a little scared of that. That's a little too intense for me yet. So anywho, since I figured out the acetone situation, it's been going faster, but I've only tested it like once since then, cause you know, it still lasts, lasts a while. Ooh, and we are on the last little knot here. Ooh, we have um, 
Uh, Donna, we do have a free we have a free pattern on our website. It's the raccoon stitch along, and it actually you get emails and videos uh, walking th you through like fourteen different stitches uh, for the for the free pattern. So I suggest um, that's a great place to start and learn a whole pile of stitches. And again, I'm here to ask questions and stuff every night um, during the week. Boop. All right. Let's get the needle on the front so I don't lose it. Uh, and there we go. So this little feller is done. I just love how the moon is kind of like his little antenna. Ugh. I love this one. I definitely want to stitch this. Oh, you don't have the website. Um, it's penguin and fish, all one word. And it's, uh, if you click the, um, my profile, actually, I think if you click my little dude up there and then, and then I think there'll be a circle of my name down here once you click that, and then it'll get you to my profile where there's a link. I, I know from a live, um, when you're, when we're on a live, it takes a little few clicks to get there, but, uh, it's penguin and fish and under like patterns, it'll say free pattern, um, or shop, it'll say like free pattern. Uh, all right. So I do still want to stitch this like this size. So I might, um, print out the PDF version of this. So this is the kit version, um, with all the supplies and everything, but I think I'm going to print out the PDF because I, I love the idea of making him like super small and then stitching it on my jean jacket with like the metallic thread. Um, I really want to do that yet. I might have to do that. So you guys, August, I want to shoot a whole pile of videos. So uh, um, I may have some more like how-to videos coming out soon and uh, lots more TikToks and lots more like short videos that I'll post to Facebook and, and all that and YouTube and all that as well. So I'm excited about that. Oh, I forgot. I got this book out. I don't know if, um, I think Gretchen last night wanted to see it, but I don't know if she's here tonight. I haven't seen her, but this is that... Uh, she asked about like a book for stitches and uh, this is the one that I happen to have. I think I, I contributed a couple projects to this. Um, this is like, I don't know, oldish now. It's from 2013. Uh, but I do look at it every once in a while. It doesn't have like every stitch in, but it does have uh, a lot and it's just kind of like fun to look at different different types of stitches and stuff and what they might be used for. Like here's a bunch of straight stitches. So this is this is a book I'd like just peeking at every once in a while. And it is the Needlecraft Style Directory. Okay, and it's a visual reference of over 50 Needlecraft styles and the stitches that go with them uh, by Sarah Whittle. Uh, so that um, was asked yesterday, so I found it. Um, otherwise, I do just spend a lot of time on Pinterest and, and uh, finding how-tos there and, and YouTube and all that. I think, you know, these days it works great for, for that sort of thing, um, for learning stitches. And then we have, like, those 14 stitches with the videos, and I do want to do more. Like, you know, we've been doing, like, this turkey work, which is, like, how we got this, like, fun, fuzzy little dude here. Um, I don't have a video besides our lives for that yet, so I do want to... Do you want to expand our little stitch library that we have going? Okay. Um, all right. Um, oh, Debbie, for a few days, I couldn't read any of the comments on Facebook. So now I can see them again. So, um, I'm glad, I'm glad I can see you guys all chatting again. All right. So, uh, I love Amy's idea about dividing this up and doing cross stitch. Cause we've been talking about, uh, cross stitch a lot lately and I think that'd be a fun way to play around with this. I'm gonna get um, my water soluble marker here and I'm just gonna totally eyeball this. We'll start with so they oh gosh I gotta make sure that these end up square somehow. They're gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be whatever it's gonna be. How about that? So I'm gonna start by just dividing this up. So this is not like cross stitch fabric or anything obviously. Uh, so it's not going to be all perfectly placed X's, but I think what I can do is like, I'm just dividing it up. Okay. I'm going to do that here too. So the trick is like, how many more can I get and make them all sort of square? All right. That was pretty decent. 
Okay, and then this way, I want one row going that way. They're going to be a little oblong, I think. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm just kind of divvying this up into a grid as best I can. I suppose I can just cut across so they're like the same. All right. I'm just trying to have them be even and eyeballing it, which is maybe silly, but we're in it now. Okay, I'm hoping three more here. <laughs> All right, we got a grid. I think we can do it. <laughs> oh, Sheila's asking, how can we buy the book? Um, I mean, I would just look at like a craft book store or just like, you know, Amazon. Uh, or, you know, what I, what I usually do is I just Google Google um, the book and then click the shopping, the shopping tab on Google and then just see all the places selling them and then kind of pick from there. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have it in the shop or anything like that. I think you'll find cross stitching these letters will go quickly a lot faster than the satin stitch. Ah, maybe. Yeah, I suppose it might be a little faster than the satin stitch, Lynn. I feel like in my brain though, like it just takes so long to do. All right, should we use one of our colors from here? I wonder about this. We kind of have a lot of it. Should we do a little orange? Orange letter L's. We don't really have that orange anywhere else except for like in the rainbow hair, but I kind of like it. And we have a lot of it yet, so that's a good enough reason. All right, so should we do it with two strands? Because I think a lot of times, um, with cross stitch, don't people do two strands quite a bit? I think so. I'm gonna have to like do all my digging into cross stitch land again. So I don't think I'm gonna do the loop method. I'm gonna just stick with, we're gonna just stick with like weaving in the ends here. So there is a little trick and I'm literally remembering this from when I did this in like, <laughs> I don't know, junior high or before, it had to be before junior high when I was doing cross stitches um, and not on normal fabric like this. I was doing it on that Ada, on Ada cloth um, with all the holes all nice. Um, but I, I must have, I've done a little cross stitch since then, but it's been a few years. All right, so I'm gonna get two strands and I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna do this the same way um, that I do eight of cloth stuff. Okay. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So, uh, so I got my little grid here. I'm going to start at the top row, but I'm going to start at the bottom left hand corner. And I'm, before I pull the thread, through too much, I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner. The trick with this is getting uh, my stitches in the exact same hole um, because it's not that eight of cloth. It's just normal, normal thread. So, all right, I'm going to pull this through. And what I'm going to do is hold these two pieces of thread. So it's going to be like over or like I'm going to catch it where I stitch next. So. I'm going to go now down to the, to the next square over the bottom left. I'm going to just flip over and pull through to see that I caught, caught the little thread there. So that's, that's what I want. That's what's going to hold my thread in place. And I, I can trim the length later, but I just wanted to make sure I caught that. And I'm going to catch the next one as well. So I'm not crossing yet. I'm, I'm just going one half of, of the diagonal. All right. And I'm going to try and catch this thread again. I'm going to go down on this side. Yep, caught that thread and uh, we should be good to go. And now I'm going to just kind of work my way back the other way. So we got two stitches on the top, my top row going from the bottom left to the upper right. Zoop, zoop. And now I'm going to do that for the whole row. And now I'm going to go back the other way and I'm going to go in the exact same hole at the top. 
There we go, our first little X. And then I'm gonna come up in the same hole down there and then go to the upper left there. And then that is it for row one. And we're just gonna do that. We're gonna jump down to row two and do that like a bunch of times. And uh, I'm feeling good about it already. This is fun. <laughs> uh, so the, the big difference uh, with this and uh, like cross stitch with Ada cloth is I, I am gonna have to pay a little bit more attention on getting all my my needle like coming up and down in the same holes that I already went through uh, because the holes aren't just there like they are in, in Ada cloth. Like on Ada cloth the thread is all or the the fabric is all laid out so that it creates holes for you. Okay but I'm loving this already. So Squares won't be perfect because I drew my own little grid here, but I think it's looking adorable already. Huh, I wonder if we can finish both these L's uh, tonight yet. Uh, I have the whole roar to do, so we still have, we still have that. Ooh, uh, uh, so rule is, um, <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm working on my cross stitch while watching, ah, oh, fun. You guys, I definitely want to do some more cross stitches. I've, I've been, uh, I know I've been saying that, but I do have like a little design going and just like ideas for tons more. So once I get like the pattern side of it, like what the, what the actual look of the PDF looks like and instructions, um, we'll be getting that out. This one looks a little bit tall and some of these are a little fat on the left and skinny after that. So maybe I'll just try and adjust that manually as I get a little further down. It's kind of fun drawing your own grid. You could like really play with that. Like what if your grid was like not perfect, like squeezed or something like that. That could be really interesting. Um, for cross stitch. Ooh, kind of want to do that now. Just a wonky grid cross stitch. It's kind of interesting. This probably takes about the same time as satin stitching this whole thing. So you can go like in and out in the same motion, but I know I'm not gonna be very accurate at that. So I'm gonna stick to, stick to what I'm doing here. This is cute. I'll, I'll do this, um, the other L in the same, um, same color. I could in theory do it um, sideways to get it done faster, but Maybe just to stay consistent, I'll do it like this. And, and uh, man, I wonder if we'll have enough floss for this even. The next row is going to be exciting because it's a nice long row. It's always kind of fun, like going all the way across a, a long row with cross stitch. feel like Jenna right now. So Jenna's doing, um, I think Kimberly designs it. Is Kimberly here today? Um, she, Jenna's doing the, uh, temperature cross stitch of, of different books. And I think she's been doing a lot of two stacked or like two rows like this next to each other, um, for, for her books, the little books on the bookshelf. <laughs> Except for she's probably going up and then down. I get, I don't know why I kind of, like, I could have gone like this way, like all the way over and then all the way this way. Maybe I'll do that for the small L, but I don't know. But I gotta do that here now at least. So I'm gonna do my little diagonals all the way down the first row.
Oh my gosh, it's three. <laughs> three there in the UK. Yikes, Julia. That's a lot. Uh, Linda says that line is so darn special. <laughs> I love how it turned out uh, with all the, the turkey work. Um, I definitely want to do more more turkey work. And I think it worked awesome for the main. Um, uh, Christy's asking, I have an off-topic question. Is it okay to use 12-weight thread to tie a quilt? Will it be strong enough? Hmm. I've tied it with pearl cotton before, but that's a little bit bigger than 12 weight. I'm thinking you'd have to put a whole bunch in, like closer. I mean, theoretically, I mean, 12 weight, you know, nice sewing thread is, is strong. It's not gonna do the tightening effect though. Like if you would use like wool yarn to um, tie your quilt. It won't, like, what I like about using wool yarn is that it'll, like, it'll um, felt up and get nice and tight, and that, that will hold it. Um, I did try using some different, like, animal-based yarn, and that did not felt as well, and a, and a bunch of them came out. A bunch of my ties came out on, on a project that I did that with. I wonder if I'll have enough thread here. So I, I don't know. I get nervous about using anything other than um, wool yarn for that now, especially if I'm going to be washing it a lot. If it's decorative, then full-on 12-weight thread will be totally fine. But yeah, I don't, I don't have a very knowledgeable answer for you on that. Oh my gosh, you guys, I might just like either barely have enough or be like shy like three stitches or something we'll see this is looking so cute though maybe if i do the other l sideways i can get him done but i want my stitches to go at the same angle like the nice thing about going all one row like this and then coming back the other way is that you make sure that your crosses cross the same thing. Like my underneath thread is always from the bottom left to the upper right and my on top thread is always the bottom right to the upper left. So I'm trying to stay consistent with that. And I don't know if I turn sideways how I'll, how I'll get that. I'll have to either do it this way. Well, let's just see. Nope. Oh, I might just have to do it backwards from what I'm doing now, which will be kind of awkward. Ooh. Maybe I'll just stick to going upright. Actually, I can go... Oh, I can just... Never mind. I, I have it figured out. <laughs> I can still do it. Oh my god, just barely enough thread for this, I think. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I think he's turning out super sweet, this guy. All right, and we did have enough thread uh, for that L. I think that's just so sweet. I love it, the little X's. And then here's what, so I love the look on the back. You just have these little lines here. I'm gonna just go underneath those stitches. And I'm going to go back the other way. Maybe I'll just go twice. I think we'll be fine here. Oops. <laughs> Tossed my needle at, at uh, my needle minder on the Luna Moth and didn't quite make it over there. All right, so I'm going to trim that. And, you know, theoretically I could, I don't know. I think we're fine here. I'm going to trim that too, even though it's only being held by that little piece. But I think we're fine. All right. Oh, yeah, and I'm just using two pieces so I can just... Um, I'll have two left over, theoretically. All right, get those together. And we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna go, instead of horizontal, I'm gonna go bottom to top. I think I'm gonna start on this far row because then I can get 
all my crosses this way. So I think on the back it's going to look different. And theoretically, I wouldn't do this on a large piece because I think all those little differences probably have a slightly different look and feel. Um, like if you have them next to each other, like if you're being like super picky. Um, but I'm playing around, so we're doing it. So I'm going to come up, I think, on this row. Because the trick is I don't want to do this row first because my last stitch will be here, and that's where I have to start for the next stitch, so I'm going to go um, the other direction. All right, so I'm going to go up. So I'm going to just try and do two rows for this, but again, i got to see where this end is. Hold it in place while I get the next stitch in. So I'm going vertical, like I said. I'm going to try and grab a whole pile of this thread. And I can sort of feel like I can drag it so it's, so I make sure that it's in the center and I can kind of see it through too. That's what's going to hold that thread in place. Oh, you can't get the, on your, you can't get the um, needle to go through all the layers. So I hate that. Um, I have had to use like a heavy duty needle um, for quilting and I've had to use like a pliers to pull it through before too. So not fun but yeah um like a big hefty needle but yeah that's a project for sure pulling all that thread through all right so we've we've catch captured a little thread on the back there and i think tonight i'll stay till i get this cross stitch done now um, and then we'll come back and do this roar some other time. I'm, I'm really happy though with, with this, uh, how this cross is just looking. It's just so fun. And I've been talking about doing this for a while, some cross stitch, and this is like getting a little bit of that fix in. All right. So now I'm going to come down the other side. Still trying to get in the same holes, which again is a little more difficult than a normal cross stitch that uses Ada fabric, because um, I'm still using like normal sewing fabric, which has a tighter weave. But it's nice to do with these long rows at once versus the little itty bitty rows. But yeah, I think on a larger project, I'd stay consistent with like the direction that I'm doing it. I'd probably stay horizontal, but I don't know if it matters all that much. Probably to the pros, it might a little bit. Gosh, I have these are really tall ones there. Those ones are funny. All right, one more row. Oh yeah. Um, yep, Michelle. So this is, uh, this is, these are the needles that will be in the kits. So yeah, same size. They're like a size five embroidery or, or cruel needle. Um, but yep, this is what's in the kits. And I'm going to do the mystery gift again. So uh, for the people watching live, um, if you order $20 or more from the shop, penguinandfish.com, I will throw in a mystery gift um, at no extra charge. You don't need to add it to, the, to your order or anything like that. I will just throw one in for you. Uh-oh, that felt funny. Yep. Felt a little shorter than it was supposed to be. Oh gosh, that's a lot of twisty ups happening here. Wow, that's a weird little 
not happening, but ooh, okay, good. Came out, came out easily. And I gotta keep my needle threaded. That's good. So I like my hand back here just to like feel for those little knots that pop up. Come back down. Not totally convinced this is faster than satin stitch, but I'm loving it for sure. They both take time. Ugh, this just adds even more texture to this piece. Like this, this particular one is like super hardcore about texture, and I think uh, the cross stitch is a good call. Good idea. Yeah, Amy. And I like using just the two strands. That's fun too. If I would have used three, they would have just been fatter X's, thicker X's. This way you can see the fabric behind it, which gives it, I think, maybe more of that little cross look. Fun. Three more, and then I'll weave in the end, and then all we have left is the roar, but I'm still gonna like hold off on that because I'm gonna leave it on this cross stitch note. I'm just digging it. And then later I'll have to come back and, you know, I got my water soluble marker around here um, all over this uh, just to like determine how big I was gonna make the main. And so we'll have to like spritz this whole thing to get rid of the blue lines and same with them. Um, you know, behind behind our little grid here. Hee <laughs> cute. All right, let's weave in these little ends. That was so fun. Ugh, I've been itching to do that. And just so fun, just draw your own grid on some fabric. Good to go. I should do that on the, um, my jean jacket too. I know you can get that waste fabric, and I do have some that you can like cross stitch on and then pull out the fabric later. I got some to try that out. I've never used that, um, and I was thinking about using that for the jean jacket, but you could literally just draw a grid, couldn't you? All right, that looks pretty dang freaking cute with those little crosses there. Ugh. All right, I have so much texture with this one. All right, you guys, so we got a good a bit further on this one. Uh, again, we just have to do a little roar. And we got our Luna Moth done tonight. This is a productive Friday, people. And I got all that website work done. Dang, I'm having, I'm having, uh, I'm doing the, doing the groceries. <laughs> We're, it's a productivity day here, magically. That's been, that's fabulous. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Okay, so, uh, so here again is how the Luna Moth turned out. So cute. And uh, then the lion again so far with that cross stitch. Ugh, he is looking so freaking sweet. Love it so much. I want to do another, another one like him with the with the um, turkey work and then just that extra texture of the cross stitch is so fun. I'll have to take another photo of it <laughs> to share with you guys. So awesome. Thank you guys again for hanging out with me here. I'll let the, um, the, uh, the mystery gift go for another 10 minutes or so here. So again, if you order $20 or more in the shop, I'll throw in a free mystery gift. I like to go for like another 10 minutes or so. And then Monday is embroidery of the month day. So uh, Sunday evening at 10 p.m. I will switch over uh, the Luna Moth to our new embroidery uh, for August 1st, which is also John's birthday. <laughs> so lots coming up, you guys. So uh, have a lovely weekend and I will see you on Monday. Good night.